First and four blunt words from a Wayne County judge to a man she's about to sentence. You are a cold-blooded human being, and there is no justification for your actions. But did prosecutors get the sentence they wanted? We'll let you know. Plus, here's Kim. A little sunshine out there, but it's not really helping our temperatures as we hover in the low to mid 30s. But a warm up on the way. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. This is a good one. It's a great story. We're going to talk about how what could have been a devastating event instead turned into a trigger to turn this woman's life from high school dropout to bank CEO. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, a Wayne County judge has harsh words for a man convicted of setting a woman on fire. Today, 67-year-old William Helmer of Farmington Hills was sentenced on charges including assault with intent to murder. It was back in 2019, prosecutors say he attacked Dorothy Spinella outside of Coney Island on Seven Mile Road in Redford Township. She suffered burns on more than 45% of her body. The photos are too disturbing to show you in full. Investigators have said Helmer attacked her because she owed him money. Spinella chose not to come to court today, letting the prosecutor speak for her. Your Honor, this was a horrific incident, and the victim is going to live with the scars for the rest of her life. Her life will never be the same. After sitting through the trial, you and the photographs, observing the psychological effect that you've had on the victim, I've come to one conclusion. You are a cold-blooded human being, and there is no justification for your actions. Helmer did not address the court. Prosecutors pushed for a 75-year sentence. The judge gave him a minimum of 40 years, which could keep him behind bars for the rest of his life. Union casino workers at MGM find themselves on the picket lines in the middle of the holiday season, but new talks are underway. Now, we did show you the picket line on Thanksgiving holiday. Today, the two sides are working with a federal mediator. We're told union reps submitted a new proposal to the casino this morning, but they're waiting to get a response. MGM workers rejected a tentative deal that was accepted over at Motor City and the Hollywood Casino at Greektown. We are monitoring the negotiations. We'll keep you posted. We're also waiting for word on when Blue Cross Blue Shield workers will vote on a tentative deal to end their strike. The agreement announced last night is poised to end a walkout that started back on September 13th. The UAW says it brings some historic wins, including ratification bonuses and stronger language to protect jobs from being outsourced. Plus, the new contract lowers the time it will take to reach the top pay rate from 22 years to just five. The union's announcement says workers will stay on strike until the deal is ratified. We're following it. We'll keep you posted on the vote. Before we get to the first forecast, here is a look at the weather in the UP, a thick blanket of snow has covered parts of Alger County, which is near the coast of Lake Superior. The area has picked up 21 inches of snow since Sunday evening. It may feel like winter here, oh, but it's really moved in early there. Right now, Kim Adams is here <laughs> to update our current conditions. Boy, we have nothing like that. No, nothing like that. And the saddest part of that is that that snow will be around until June in some areas of the UP. Although they love it up there. Most people do anyway. That's why they live there. So uh, it is cozy. It's nice if you don't have to drive in it. 35 at City Airport now, mid-30s in Mount Clemens and Monroe. 34 at Metro Airport and freezing, literally, out in Ann Arbor, 32 degrees. Feels like it's in the 20s, so even though we're just maybe two or three degrees warmer than yesterday, it doesn't really feel like it. Right now it's four degrees warmer out at the airport than it was just 24 hours ago. Seven degrees warmer at Metro and then eight degrees warmer up in Pontiac. But it is going to warm up tomorrow back into the upper 40s. That's going to feel really nice. But we have multiple chances for snow possibly mixed with some rain or all snow over the next seven days. So we need to talk about that in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Kim. We could be in the final hours of a truce between Israel and Hamas unless international negotiators can strike a deal to keep the ceasefire going. Plus, there are some growing concerns this afternoon about the fate of some very young hostages. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom following both of these stories for us. Kim? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Hamas has freed 
two Russian Israeli women today and could swap 10 more hostages at any time in exchange for 30 Palestinian prisoners. Many people around the world want to see more scenes like this one. Hostages returning to Israel after being abducted during that terror attack back on October 7th. These former captives were actually released Tuesday, but it usually takes a little while to get the video. Sources say the current negotiations could extend the truce by another two days to ensure the release of the remaining women and children still being held. Qatar is a key player in the diplomacy. Take a listen. I can't comment on the details of what's happening in the negotiating room at, uh, at the moment, but it is happening in a positive in, uh, environment, and it fills us with hope that we will be able to announce uh, something positive by the end of the day. Meanwhile, the Israeli military says it's investigating a claim the youngest Israeli hostage is no longer alive. Many people have been following the fate of the red-headed Bibas children. Now Hamas claims 10-month-old Kiefer, 4-year-old Ariel, and their mother were killed during an Israeli airstrike. So far, Hamas has not provided evidence. The family is asking for privacy as they're waiting for confirmation on that. Israel has said it is willing to extend the truce as long as Hamas keeps releasing hostages. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vows to continue the war at some point to destroy Hamas. Things could be changing in the next few hours, so we'll have another update when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Kim. Several military families are anxiously waiting word as the Japanese Coast Guard searches for victims of an Air Force crash. The American Osprey went down off the coast of Yakushima Island during a routine training mission. Eight crew members were on board. The Coast Guard found one man who was dead in an empty lifeboat. It's been searching the waters into the night. The Osprey is a hybrid aircraft that takes off and also lands like a helicopter but can cruise like an airplane. That model has had some other safety problems in the past. We will keep you posted on the search. Okay, so now we are going to talk about an amazing full circle moment at a local credit union. The torch is being passed from a teacher to a student whose life took a huge turn from high school dropout to CEO. Paula Tutman shows us what it took to get that corner office with a view. You know, in terms of a meteoric rise, this one shoots across the sky like a comet. We're talking about a young woman who had no education, no drive, no future, now the CEO of a bank. No advantages for Sati Smith. If anything, as a young woman, there were many disadvantages. I was a single mother at home going to school on public assistance. Welfare is what we called it at that time. I actually dropped out of high school in 11th grade, and I end up getting a GED once I got pregnant. What could have become a downward spiral instead became her personal catalyst for change. She had a new baby, was living at home, and her father made her get a job. With no training whatsoever, she put in an application at the Kroger Employees Credit Union called Kimba, and in three days, she was working as a teller. And in her baby daughter's eyes, she saw who she wanted to be. All of a sudden, school seemed like a great idea. I went to Highland Park Community College, and then I went to Wayne State. The CEO at the time saw something in Sati she didn't see in herself. The CEO, Kathy Trimbass, like, you need to go to CEO school. And so she started to climb baby in tow, from teller to tech, to every job you can do in a banking institution. Three years of CEO school, going to Cornell University, Wharton, all those prestigious colleges, and walking in there and walking in those hallways, and it's like, I am here, wow. I can do this. And today in her office with a view at Diversified Members Credit Union, she is the new CEO and the first ever black female CEO at this institution. What needs to be transformed right now that's in your sights? Uh, financial literacy, educating our members. It doesn't matter, it's relevant to everybody internally developing the team. You know, you don't get the seat to just have the seat. 
you get the seat because you want to encourage others and help them and get developed. We have three branches. We have a branch in Novi, one in Clawson, and the one here in Maine, and we have a satellite branch in the KMAC building. Expanding, expanding the brick and mortar. Having more of a presence in the Metro Detroit area. That's my goal. And as we were talking, something else hit her. She didn't realize it until just that moment. In fact, she had never even thought or said it before. I'm proud of me. I am proud of me. And I have not said that. I have not. My life just flashed before me. I'm proud of me. I did it. And if I can do it, there are so many others that can do it too. Okay, so did you do that math? We're talking about all of this in just about 25 years. What's her next goal? Well, I don't know. You got a planet you think nobody can hit? <laughs> I think she can take it on. Paula Tutman, Local 4. I love how she realizes I'm proud of me. What an amazing journey. Paula, thanks so much for that story.